Hello friends, I'm Colonel Failure and this is Transport Fever. This is a special one-off episode where I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about how signals work and a few other things you can do with them. So in order to demonstrate this, I've got a couple of stations set up and a depot. Nothing more complicated than that. Uh, we're going to name these stations something that we can actually get behind. Uh, so that's station A there. And over here we have station B. Um, the, the the signaling in uh, in Transport Fever doesn't work like it does in other games, but it does work. You just need to spend some time getting used to it. So the first thing we're going to do is set up one route here. Yes, uh, and oddly enough, that route is going to go from Station A to Station B and back again. Uh, obviously, we don't need to tell it to go back again because it it'll just do that. So here we go. This is uh, this is well. No, let's stick with line one. Why the hell not? Uh, and in order to run something down line one, we're going to need a train. And just to keep it simple, we're going to go with something relatively lightweight. And we've got the full selection going on here. Don't worry about you know making money or anything like that. This is purely how to get a little bit of action out of your signals. So we're going to build a very simple one wagon. Uh, one locomotive with three wagons, right, there we go. Uh, and we'll set that to line one. There we go, off and running. So we have one train running up and down the line here quite happily. Uh, it will continue to do so ad infinitum. There is nothing to get in its way. Now, the only reason that I would possibly want to add any signals to this line at all is if I was to add another train. Uh, basically, signals exist purely for handling additional trains. Now, I don't think I really need to explain, but what I can't do right now is stick another train on this line because there is absolutely no way for these guys to get past each other, as you can tell. And also, looking at the route here, you'll see the line runs in both directions. The arrows run both ways. There we are. See, so very simple stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade. Let's let's do the upgrade at station B. We'll do the upgrade at station B. We'll add a second platform. Now, early in the game, uh, while you're still struggling to make ends meet, this is the most likely thing you're going to do. Is is add a second if you actually make the upgrade. Good. Yeah. Nothing like looking effective when doing a tutorial. Uh, is at a second platform, and then we will get that second platform attached to the main route. Just like that. Piece of cake. Now, what I can't do at this point is I can't set another train onto route A. Uh, line 1, even. I can't I can't set another train on there. It will not work. In fact, if we buy it, I'll, uh, I'll show you, and then I'll explain why. Right, so here is our new train coming out. Very nice. And then it can go no further. So, it has stopped. Oddly enough, it stopped at the end of the station. Now, the other train on the line has also stopped at the end of the station. And this is because stations have implied signals built into them. There is a signal, in theory, at the end of each station. So you can imagine a station itself is one block, right? So a block that runs from one end of the platform to the other. A train that is on its own can move in that station block. The second it tries to enter a block that has another train in it, it can't go. So it has to wait effectively for this next block to become clear, which it will never do because there's another train trying to enter the same block problematic. And because they're on the same line, there is no way for them to escape. There is there is no space for these trains to work. So the first kind of signal we'd use to actually get around this is we would use a waypoint. Now waypoints serve no purpose at all other than for route making. And we're going to need to make a new route. Because the trains will not decide to use an empty platform simply because one exists. So we will go from well, in this case, we've gone from B to A. The actual ordering of your route doesn't make much difference. Uh, and then we will add... Um, yeah, okay. May, well, maybe I should point that out now. Whenever you add something new to your network, whether that's a route or a signal or anything else, other routes 
that exist already will rethink themselves. They will take a change of heart. They'll, they'll spin things around and they will look for an alternate route. Thank you, game. So if I now set our original train here onto line two, we should be able to go. Except, of course, it can't, because there should be another train in that block. And this is... there. This, this you should now be moving. In fact, if I turn you around, turn around, and then turn around again, it can now go. If a train is stuck at a signal, sometimes you do need to spin it around just to get it to have a, have a rethink. And now it can go. So our second line is the green one. Our first line is the yellow. And what I was going to do, in fact, I shall do this just for efficiency's sake, in between, so leaving uh, ro no, sorry, station A, we will go via the waypoint. Now, I could also do that, just to show you that it works. We could do the same to our second route here, and they would both go up this side, but we don't want to do that, otherwise it wrecks all the hard work we've done. Meanwhile, this train is still waiting because there's a train in the block it wants to go into. The first one, meanwhile, has no problem at all zipping up the line, but this one can't use that bit of line because there's another train on it. So the next thing you're most you're uh, quite likely to do is you'll set up a passing point for your trains. So let's do that now. There we go. Now, with a passing point, you don't actually need uh, two platforms at either of your stations. Uh, in fact, let's send both of these chaps back to the depot and we'll go from there. You, depot. You, oh, yeah, yes, you, also depot. There you go. They won't even head up that line, even though they're going in the same direction. It will not proceed until the track is clear. And the track only becomes clear when that train clears the station. As it has now done. Right, so we're going to set up our passing track. And to show you that you don't need a second platform to make this work, we shall do it like this. In fact, we don't even need a second line now. We can run them both up one line. So we'll go like that. And we'll go like that. Now, this passing point on its own isn't going to work. We do need to give trains a reason to stop. So at the moment, it's considered to be all part of one block. And as you can see, the, the route itself is not... Hold on, if we bring up line two here. Uh, let's bring up line two. They're both trying to use the quickest path between the two stations, as well they should. And in fact, we don't even need line two, so let's delete it. Instead, what we shall do is we shall say that... What we could do is we could use a waypoint and say that on the way back, I want you... So after you've finished at station B, I want you to head up... No, 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 because of the way that trains always try and drive on the right. We'll go like that. As you can see, we've now got a perfectly formatted route because trains try to drive on the right. Um, they'll head up this side and then head back down the other side, creating effectively the opportunity for a, for a passing system. And it might just work. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, set you in motion and set you in motion. And the interesting thing is going to be, where are they going to stop? I'm not entirely sure. I know how to get this working, but I'm not sure if this is, if, if this is going to be a going to be a, 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 a attempted collision here or uh, or if things are going to work sadly trains never collide no matter how badly planned out your route now all being well this chap would now proceed and head into our passing point here but no there is no way of doing so and that is because we still only have three blocks we have block one in this station block two is station B, and then block three is this whole center point, even with a waypoint sitting in there. So let's pause this so nobody gets carried away while I do a little reorganize. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we will get rid of this waypoint, because we're not going to need it. Instead, we'll stick a signal in. Now, every time you add a signal, you create another block, potentially. Putting a signal there is actually going to do nothing at all, because... Well, you can, st you can still enter this track from both sides, no matter that there's a signal there. Uh, and the route doesn't even take it into account. So to create the extra block, what we're going to need to do 
is place a signal at that end. And while placing signals in the, uh, in the right facing for the trains, the route will usually adapt to it. So now, if we set things in motion again, both trains should be able to move absolutely fine because this train has a... So if we, uh, if we just hold our horses here for a moment, we've got a block here, as before, but now we have a block that runs through this duration here all the way up to this signal. Likewise, we have another block at station A and a second one that runs all the way up to this signal point here. So when the train reaches the signal, it will see its block is the, the next block is clear and off it jolly well goes. So these are kind of an inferred block you've got towards these junction points. So these two chaps will quite happily now run until the end of time. Now, if I wanted to mix things up a little and make it so that trains didn't default to running on the right, what I could do is I could set these signals as a waypoint. Signals can be used as a waypoint. Another thing you can do with signals is you can set them so that they are one way only by clicking on them. Uh, obviously, the signal is never going to have an effect on a train running in the opposite direction. But you can set that signal to be one way so that it is impossible for trains to run in the opposite direction. Now, what if I want to run a third train? Well, the easiest thing to do there is to, you know, run one. Now, get one of those. And on this one, we'll do a couple of these. One, two, three. There we go. Set onto line one. Now, theoretically, I should have enough blocks to make this work. The question is, is it going to? If anything, what I'd expect to see would be one train waiting in the station while the trains pull to the signals. This train will now pull up to this signal while that one passes through and it will wait while this one clears put through. Effectively, as long as your system has one more block than you do trains, your trains will continue to move. This is not always the case, however, so you see, we'll wait again while that guy clears the block there. Thank you very much, we don't need new vehicles right now. But the signal will hold them while the next block clears. Pretty straightforward. So if I wanted to add a fourth train to this network, I would need to add another block. Uh, let's do it. Uh, we'll we'll stick with the same style. I think we'll we'll keep things we'll keep things relatively straightforward and, and stick with the same style. Uh, let's put a state car on this one. Two, three. Set onto line one. Now, with those two stations effectively being blocks, I no longer have a, a spare block. There is no spare block, which means that at some point there's going to be nowhere for these services to go to which will happen pretty much now. So as you can see, our first block at the station here, occupied by the, uh, by the new arrival. And once again, waiting at the end of the station. In the second block, this guy's waiting at the signal to wait for the third block over at this station here to clear. And the fourth block, of course, got a train waiting. This can be fixed very quickly with the addition of one more signal, creating one more block. Now, you might think, well, if I stick a signal in here, that will allow this train to move forward. And indeed it will. But here's the reason you don't want to do that. You ready? Watching? You can probably spot the mistake before it happens. Very good. We have created another block, but in doing so, we've made it that this one still can't move because this chap is blocking the points. Basically, if ever you block the points, you've made an error. That's a that's a decision you you just didn't want to make. Instead, what would be good, and we can you know we can put a signal right up against the back of the previous train, and we've given that chap somewhere to go. Let's remove the bad signal. Now this doesn't matter how many trains you run up here, you can put as many trains as you have space. And it will work. So if we wait for the next train to come in, there we go, 
stick one in there, it gives us another block, which means effectively we can put another train on there. Okay, so our network is working now, uh, but it's working like a sliding puzzle. There is only one spare block at any given moment, so only one train can move at any given moment, and it will almost inevitably be one of the ones at either end. So, as you can see, when this chap clears out towards the station, everybody moves up one. And then because we've got slightly longer distance to go here, we'll have a slightly longer wait before our stake wagon here moves along to the next station. But this is uh, something that you won't do. Uh, you will never have signals this close together unless you really are running very densely packed traffic. Uh, but this is just by way of an example. It's not a, not a practical application, but it does work. And this will run forever and ever very, very inefficiently. Um, so, what is, a more slight, well, what is a more practical application then? I hear you ask. Okay, so what I've set up here is I've set a twin track, as you would expect, route between station A and station B with a crossover going on just outside so that we can switch from one side of the track to the other as the need arises. And then, uh, because I want a second route, I've created a branch off onto the second station here. So our first route will run A, B, C, B, A, quite straightforward, and our second route will run A, B, A. Pretty straightforward stuff. I've also set the signals out slightly differently. Let's, uh, let's set our first our first volunteer in motion here, uh, and we'll we'll follow along the signalling. In fact, we'll set a we'll set another one immediately behind it. Okay, so what this train is going to do is it's going to move over to the right as soon as it gets the chance. There we go, and it starts sailing through signals because there is nothing to get in its way. The second train will follow it up the track, and they're not going to be close enough together to use the signals fully. So let's set our first second train in motion. Then another one on one, then another one on two, and then on one, on two, on one. Now, the busiest part of this track is going to, or this, this network, I should say, is going to be this central section here, because both routes require that section in both directions. Uh, I'll show you the routes in a, you know, properly in just a moment. But at the moment, just have a just have a pay attention to the signals. Now I've used a waypoint in order to route the second track there. As you can see, the waypoint. And then the rest of it has got signals exactly as it was described in the previous part of this video. So before this junction here, we have a signal waiting. And obviously now that's through the signal, it is in that station block. Now, the downside to being in that station block means that it has right of way over what is effectively the main line, because there is nothing to stop it. So, a sensible move would probably be to place a signal here to avoid blocking the main line for very long. The only downside to that, of course, is that uh, if we've got a train held there and the next train coming in also wants to come into this platform, we could end up with a little bit of a wait. But the logic in the game is actually pretty reasonable. It will allow things to take it in turns. There is a certain amount of patience that will allow trains to escape eventually. And by and large, the rule is, first train to the signal gets to go first. But occasionally, it will let the faster service go ahead, slowing down a train that is actually closer to a signal. Equally, a, station, uh, a train that is waiting at a signal may have an extended wait while several pass through. I haven't quite worked out the logic of this decision-making, but there will be some in there somewhere. So this is all running rather smoothly, as well it should be, I've, I've set it up correctly. And there would be some efficiency to be gained in this reversing service. Oh, hold on, there's some trouble. You're going to have to wait there, sunshine. Who are we waiting for here? There we go. Yeah, we've got possibly one extended block. So what I would look to do now, were I running this uh, on a regular basis, were I running this for, for profit, let's bring up line two here. So this is the green line, which is just going A, B, A. And as you can see, I've also routed this so that A and B, or lines one and two, come in on the other side of the station. And the game did that for me, because the game's generous like that. 
it will figure out what is the most effective route based on everything that's running currently and will try to make use of all the resources you have available. Doesn't always get it right, but when it does, it works rather well first time. Now, where this will, this setup will probably slow down is when the uh, the order of the trains I've got at the moment start to shuffle. So, for if, for example, we have two trains in a row that want to head in on the uh, on the second line on this green line, uh, then we will have a queue start to form on this section of track. Like now, for example, those two were back to back. But if the timing is good, this chap should slip in between them. And that gap will be erased again. There we go. So I don't know how much you've actually learned from this. Uh, but basically, I've shown off the way that I use signals. Um, hopefully, the, the concept of a release signal makes sense now. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, that's a thing I'm going to continue to use. And maybe it will, you'll find a use for it. Maybe you won't. But the fundamental remains the same. If you want to move trains around your network, you need one more block than you have trains. Uh, and even then, that will cause the occasional queue to form. Uh, the more signals you have, the less likelihood you get queues. Although the greater likelihood, everybody starts to ramp up against each other. If, for example, I removed all of the signals on this network, apart from... Signal, 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 all the way up here to this first junction. Oh yeah, everyone would move very, very quickly through this first section, but we'd form an enormous queue here. So spacing your signals out, pretty important stuff. Anyway, thanks very much for watching today. I hope this has been of some use, even if it does kind of plod around a little bit. I've been Colonel Failure. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it, if you found any use for it at all. Subscribe if you've not yet done so, and I'll be back with you very soon with some more transport fever. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.